Okay, uh, we are here for webinar number three in the GRIT series. And it's cool to see some of you returning. And then there's also some new faces today. So that's super duper awesome. And today we have Gwen Gibson on the webinar with us. Um, Gwen is going to tell us a little bit about who she is. But first of all, I want to start by saying um, I went to Lake Paris a few years ago and watched the the like epic varsity battle between her and Maddie Bemis. And I remember talking to Matt Ganell that day and he was just like so pumped about the girls race. And that's kind of what started me as a Gwen fan. <laughs> um, and then ever since then, when Gwen has come home from college, she and I have been able to connect to go for rides. And we've done some really long rides together, which has given us a lot of time to, um, to talk about life and cycling and school and all of that. And so I am super proud and honored to have her on this webinar because I think uh, she's a wonderful role model for all of you on here and even for myself included. So with that, I will let Gwen uh, go ahead and introduce herself. Yeah, so I'm Gwendolyn Gibson. I raced in the SoCal League, um, I think it would have been like 2015 through 2018 or 2017. Uh, I raced for Ramona High School. So yeah, I started in the freshman girls category and then JV the next year and then varsity my last two years. And now I, I went on to uh, ride for Colorado Mesa University and I'll graduate this coming May. And that's most of about me, I guess. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, yeah. so you rode for Ramona High School. Uh, what was your team like? Like, how big was it when you rode? It started off my freshman year. It was a pretty small team. I think my freshman year, I was the only girl. And then by the time I was a senior, I think we had like six or seven girls on the team. And we went from, like, we started off as a Division two team. And, and by my junior, senior year, uh, we were division one, um, and, uh, we, we ended up having a pretty strong team, especially my junior year. Um, yeah. And so a lot of your posts, you talk about like coming home to ride with your coach that helped get you into mm -hmm. riding. Can you tell us a little bit about who he is and how he had an impact on you? Yeah, so Mr. Grace or Robert Grace was my high school coach, and he's been a family friend of mine known me since I was like uh, four years old or so and so when I was uh, in middle school there wasn't middle school racing yet so I was about to be a freshman so he just like can he was like trying to convince me to be on the team at first I actually wanted nothing to do with it I didn't want to do it but he like convinced me to try it out and then after the first year I I loved it and then he's just kind of taught me everything I know from there, taught me all my bases and, and still super close with him. Yeah. Just had dinner with him the other night actually, and went on a ride with him. So it's awesome. I mean, it, when I think about it, it completely changed my life uh, by joining the team and racing in the NICA league and having that it. Yeah. I can't even imagine what my life would be like if that had never happened. And you were a runner also, right? Yeah, I did a, I did like a, a bunch of other sports up until like my sophomore year where I did, I did run, I ran cross country and cycling all four years, but before I did like volleyball, gymnastics, soccer, like kind of tried everything out. And then I def, I ended up just deciding that endurance sports were what I loved the most. And so that's what I kind of ended up sticking with. But yeah, Did you run all through, you ran all through high school though, right? Yeah, I ran until I was a senior. Mm -hmm. And so rumor has it that when you were trying to find a college, you actually had um, offers for both sports. Is that true? Yeah. So I, uh, it was kind of like, then I had to make the decision. Did I want to continue with running or cycling? And, and, and I really enjoyed running. It was great. But when I th think of like, training for running versus training for cycling and just the environment. I, it wasn't like that hard of a decision for me to make. I feel like, um, and I toured like a couple schools. Um, once I toured Grand Junction, uh, Colorado Mesa, where I am now, like after the, right after the tour, I toured like my junior year of high school, 
right after the tour, I was like, yep, this is, I'm going here. I didn't even apply to anywhere else. I was like, that's where I want to go. <laughs> wow. That's really, really cool. Mm -hmm. Like one and done. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I looked at a, a few campuses, but I was, I was sold after touring the campus for sure. Wow. That's, and, that's really cool. Um, yeah. Okay. So then you said mountain biking, like your first year, you weren't too sure about it. And then you just, you loved it. Like mm -hmm. what, what do you think clicked for you? Like why, why? Honestly, I, I don't think it's one particular thing. I mean, I definitely, I think endurance sports is where I, what I'm most passionate about. Mm -hmm. And then like being so new about something uh, or about, a, or to a sport, I had, I had like so much to learn and it, I feel like that just felt so exciting to me. And then honestly, uh, the environment of the Nike races, just in comparison to any other sport I had done before, like it's competitive and, and you want to win, but it it's, I felt like it was a more positive, it, like the most positive sport environment I had been in. And I liked that about it a lot. I think that's what drew me to it the most. It was like, it was like, I enjoyed being competitive and racing, but a lot of it was just fun to be around too. Yeah. I, I feel like SoCal, not to be biased, but I feel like SoCal does a really good job. Like Matt and Brandon have definitely put a lot of emphasis into making it like more like a fun bike festival versus just a super competitive race. And with mm -hmm. other sports, like even like cross country can be fun, but still when you show up to the invitationals on weekends, I feel like it's just very like you are there to compete and that is and it. You don't talk to like anyone else. And, yeah. and with cycling and in the Nike league, like some of my closest friends that I still have today, I met in the Nike league. And yeah. I feel like that's pretty unique to the sport. I in my like you I got to meet people from a bunch of different areas especially because I did the the mammoth Nike summer camp I That's mean cool. I made That's just cute. some of my closest friends ever I, I that I still keep in touch with even now and I'm about to graduate college so I I feel like that's I feel like that's unique to Nike in general so. Yeah. Yeah. I think it definitely is. So then, um, you did mention that like, even though you wanted to win, can you tell mm -hmm. us about some of the events in high school that you won? Um, so yeah, well, I think back to my freshman year, I, my freshman year, I was like seventh overall in the freshman girls category. And I was like way off the pace. And I, I remember being like, okay, I'll, I like this. I want to be in the mix. So I, I need to start like riding my bike a little more and like, and working on that. And then my, uh, when I came back my sophomore year, I raced JV. Um, and I knew I could, I mean, I just remember this also like clearly I, I knew I, I remember talking to Mr. Grace and I wanted to win. Like it was my goal. I was like, all right, I've been, I've been training really hard. I want to win, win this race. And, but I was still kind of shocked. I, I, uh, was kind of able to like ride away a little bit. And I remember the whole race being, being like, oh my gosh, this, I can't believe this is even actually happening. <laughs> I still like remember it so clearly but um and then so that year in JV um I won all of the league races so the overall and then JV states and then the next two years I raced varsity and it mostly I feel like it was a lot of back and forth between me and Madeline which was just exciting we I mean we're such similar uh levels it it was really just who felt better on the day and it, it was it was exciting because it was always kind of like oh who's who's gonna get it you're always a little nervous but um yeah and then but I was yeah I think I yeah I got the overall my junior and senior year like but I think just barely maybe even um and then I got state both years uh as in varsity my junior and senior year too that's awesome. So you basically went from being like seventh as a freshman to, huh, I think I'm going to try and win some races. And then you had a really successful career. It doesn't mean you won every single race after that, but you won quite yeah. a few. And so just so some of the girls can have an idea, like you said, you trained really hard. So mm -hmm. 
in between your freshman and sophomore year, like say that summer and fall, approximately if you had to guess how many hours do you think you were writing because that was before you had a coach like a, a private yeah right yeah at that point like Miss, mr grace was my coach he taught me mostly like uh technical abilities yeah. and and bike handling things um at the time even up till my junior year I was probably riding around like 10 or 12 hours a week but okay. I think what really helped a lot was all through the summer and in the fall I was running cross country which is which was super great cross training um so I think doing that as well definitely contributed to my success and then once I was a senior and and then in college, the volume got more and more, but I'm happy. I, I feel like, um, I feel like it's good, especially when I was younger, like, uh, 10 hours a week felt like a lot then. And it, it was what I, I feel like that was a good way to start and not overload so much when you're so young, I feel like, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, no, it definitely does. And I think there's a lot to that. So one of the reasons I asked that question is because I had a feeling that you did ride lower volume like that, which again, to some people that sounds like a lot maybe, but mm -hmm. compared to what you're doing now, I'm sure it's pretty low, but it also yeah. shows that like you can do more than one sport and get fitness from everything. Like even if you play soccer or some people like snowboard or whatever, like you yeah. still get benefits from doing other sports. So you don't have to like only focus on racing your bike if you want to be a good bike racer like yeah. further down the line you probably get to a point where you had to make a choice exactly but and I I feel like that's like one of the best things you can do is not specialize too early I think it's important uh to try a lot of things and it ends up helping you like down the line if you try more sports or do different things uh when you're younger could make you stronger in the long run um like I know like gymnastics in particular helps a lot with bone density it, yeah. um and you just you develop I feel like it helps you develop a little better um and so also your major now is exercise physiology right mm -hmm. and so I'm sure now you can also look back like you just made the bone density comment I'm sure yeah. now looking back to you're especially like you're knowledgeable about what you're doing without even realizing it as a kid that's, yeah that's like now I can appreciate like I'm happy sometimes I'm like oh maybe if I had specialized a little earlier I could have had more success earlier on but now with the knowledge that I've gained yeah throughout school I'm I'm happy I didn't and I tried other sports before and um and and then yeah once it came time eventually if you want to get more serious about it and and race at you know like a UCI level or World Cups or at the US Cups, eventually it's good to look into specializing more, which is why eventually I only did running and biking. So your body can only handle so much too. But I learned that the hard way. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think it it's good to try more than one thing. Did you ride with friends a lot in high school? Like, were you one of those girls that was like chasing the boys or did you have like other girlfriends that you rode with or did you ride alone all the time? Yeah, on, well, so one of one of my like best friends that I met uh, through cycling was on my uh, Ramona team. He's literally sitting right next to me right now. Oh, Seth. <laughs> so he was on my high school team and I trained a lot, I mean, when we didn't, weren't doing team rides, I trained with Seth like every single day. And Steph, he was faster than me then. I think I'm, I'm definitely <laughs> faster now. But, <laughs> but it was good. We trained a lot together. And then now that I'm in high school, it's it's super, or not in high school, college, sorry. Um, I There's a ton of girls on the team that are super strong. And we train together all the time, which is nice. That's really cool. Yeah, that's probably a cool transition. Okay, so to wrap up your high school chapter, mm -hmm. do you have a favorite racing memory from your high school days? Yeah, so I, I think it was uh, for sure for me, my uh, my junior year, um, I got, I it was like the first race at Lake Paris. 
I had won the varsity girls race. Seth had won the sophomore boys race. And then another girl on our team won the sophomore girls. And wow. we had like, we had a lot of other strong finishers. And I think this was the first year we were division one and we got the team trophy. I remember like we won like the overall for the team points that day. And I, I feel like that's still one of my like favorite memories. My coach, Mr. Grace, totally crying, like just a <laughs> good memory. We're all like run up to the podium together I feel like that's a hundred percent my favorite memory you know there's also a lot to be said too like once you get a group that loves to like ride mountain bikes and has fun doing it and you guys all start riding together like that energy is contagious too yeah you know like it's not like you all have to be super serious like you can just start having fun and riding your bike more and working on your skills together and you have good coaches and then it just all clicks like that I think that's definitely what it was and we had like this group that we would all do like we would all do the team rides together and ride together and most of the time it, it just didn't even feel like training we just were we were just riding every day because we loved it and I I think we were all kind of shocked that day to show up and 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 do what we did I don't think any of us really like quite understood what our capabilities were and I think that's part of what made it so exciting and then you like go up it's all your closest friends and you're sharing it all together I mean it was a pretty cool thing you know the other thing too is like a lot of people try to say that like Paris is the easiest course but (laughs) I actually think it's one of the hardest because it's so flat uh like there's a lot of tactics that come into play which you were racing against Maddie Bemis who's going on to race in Europe on the road next year so obviously exactly against someone that has those tactics too yeah and for me for me I'm a climber. I like climbing. So definitely for me, Paris was always, Paris was even in terms of tech, technical, um, um, features, it, it was a simple course, but, but I'm, it was a course that was probably the most difficult for me to win at. Yeah. What was your favorite course? My favorite course in high school. I'm trying to think it was probably either Keysville or I really liked Los Olivos, but I don't think we had that my my uh, my senior year. But I loved Los Olivos. Yeah, it's really pretty out there too. And both of those spots have great camping too. Did mm-hmm. you guys camp at all the races, your team? Yeah, we would. I we would bring like a trailer and camp at all of them. Which was another. I mean, that was another part of what I liked so much about the SoCal League too is like it wasn't just it's not just like a it it was a full weekend thing you go and you're like camping with all your friends and that's I think that's why you're able to make more friends like from different high schools because a lot of people are there camping and you end up there's like more opportunity to mingle and meet people and make friends I 100% agree with that Mm -hmm. um Okay, so now let's kind of, well, really quickly, does anyone have any more questions about about Gwen racing in high school before we move on to college? If you do, you can either unmute or put it in the chat box. I'll wait just one second to see before I move on to college. Um, And don't be shy. If you have any questions at all, you can ask. Okay, and if something else comes up, Again, you can unmute or put it in the chat box. This webinar is kind of like open format. I want to make sure everyone gets a chance to ask whatever questions they want. Um, so then moving into college, you made the comment that you went to Colorado Mesa and that ended up being the only place that you applied to. What, yeah. what was it and is it, since you're still there, what is it about Grand Junction, Colorado that won your heart? Uh, for me, I think, well, I knew I, I, I feel like most, like I knew I was going to go to Colorado because I love Colorado and then junction the, I mean, part of it is the riding was so great. I, I mean, I did a mountain bike ride and it, it almost, it feels like you're in Utah a little bit. It's like red rocks. And I was like, oh my gosh, I've never seen anything like this. And, and the campus is also super beautiful. And I knew I wanted to do exercise science and they have a really incredible performance lab, which I toured when I was there. And now I've worked in the performance lab the last two years and just did my internship there. And that was part of the reason why I, I really wanted to uh, go there too, just to gain that experience. Cause that's kind of the setting I'd like to work in eventually. Mm-hmm. Um, so 
I feel like a combination of those things and and the cool. environment is also really great. I mean the coach the coach um the the coach at the college started coaching me my junior year and it uh still coaches me now and high school, he, right? what was that? You started working working with him your junior year in high school, right? Mm -hmm. So like right after I uh committed to go there he started coaching me because I didn't have a coach like a I like I have Mr. Grace but not not um like more performance based so I like it was like kind of the next step to get to the next level yeah yeah like Mr. Grace still helps helped with all the technical skills and like organize all the practices and racing schedule but like if you, yeah, I understand what you're saying. So McKenna has a really good question. Um, was it scary going so far away ho- from home for college? I mean, for me, I I wanted to get out and explore other areas. So for me, it felt more exciting, but I know it can be a scary thing to leave uh, and like change what your normal routine is so drastically. But I mean, for me, it was one of the greatest things I ever got to do and I still, come back and see my family all the time. I'm back in California right now visiting my family and uh, I call my mom every day. So, but, but um, for me, it was exciting, honestly, to, to change my scenery and change. And I, in high school, I didn't, uh, I feel like I didn't know, have a lot of people that enjoyed the same things as me. And then when I went to school, it was like, I had this whole group of people that that all were interested in the same things as me, I was much happier. Yeah, and I think like, if you find a school where you feel like you have family, it also yeah. makes it less scary to be away from home because you have support there too. Yeah, and that's in, that's part of uh, what I was trying to explain with the collegiate team is the environment that they created with the team at CMU. I mean, it, it does, it feels like immediately, I, I felt like I had a full family there. And I've, I mean, I, I made so many great friends there too. And your family is, came out for, was it Thanksgiving? Yeah. So they came Sorry, in. I, apparently I stalk you on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I they usually story. come in and spend Thanksgiving in Junction and then I come home all winter break. So and that's your a really good writer too, right? My, what was that? Your brother is a really oh, great yeah. too. My my little brother's 13 and I feel like he he does other sports more competitively. He doesn't want to do the same thing as me, but if he ever did choose cycling, he he's very talented. And I mean if we're we're doing a downhill race, he would destroy me a hundred percent. Yeah, but you could like block him. Yeah, maybe if I just don't let him buy, but I think he's taller than me now, which is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. Um, okay, so Olivia wants to know, did you race club or varsity on the collegiate team? And also, did you have the opportunity to try different disciplines of cycling? Yeah, so that's, oh, that's another thing that I love to talk about, actually. But um, so CMU is a, is a varsity team, so I raced varsity, and that's one of the great things about collegiate too is I did get to try downhill and do solemn other and that's how I did site I've done cycle cross now all these disciplines that I had never tried before and probably wouldn't have um it gave me an opportunity to like even if I knew cross country was my specialty it was fun that I got to try a bunch of different uh disciplines yeah and they have like an Omnian event for collegiate, right? Can you explain what that what that means? Yeah, so for Omnium, you would race, you would race every event. You would do cross country, short track, dual solemn, and downhill. And I did that, um, I think I, I did it my sophomore and junior year. I didn't do it my freshman year. Um, but it was, it's a, it's crazy. It's hectic because you have all these different practices and, race starts every day and it's it is exhausting but it's so much fun yeah and I feel like my problem was I always wanted to do so great in all of them that I would end up really you need to compromise somewhere you need to know that one of the races your you need your performance isn't going to be the best 
but I'd still keep trying to push hard and I end up getting injured a few times, oh, no. but <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> so what was your favorite, like, let's say not cross country and not short track, because those are your specialties. What was your favorite yeah. discipline that you've done? Well, if we're just in, just in mountain biking, I liked the downhill race a lot, Okay, but in all the dis dis other disciplines I got to try, oh, I love cycle cross because it kind of combines my two sports that my two main yeah. sports that I've done. And now I'll probably, uh, my original plan was to race a full cycle cross season this year. And I was going to try to like make the world's team for cycle cross, but you know, that all didn't really pan out, <laughs> but that's okay. It's definitely something I'm going to try in the future. Yeah. Um, that's that's really cool. Cross is fun. Cross is really hard also. I love it. Yeah. It's super fun. <laughs> yeah. um, oh, so I did. I, I definitely forgot. I did try road too, but I'm not. Uh, I, I wasn't going to bring that one up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I almost forgot about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I know there's a few girls on here, like Kelsey and McKenna that I see on my front screen that would probably kick butt at Omnium because they both have really great yeah. downhill skills also. So yeah. I think it's cool that they have that in college um, mm -hmm. because also I bet you there are some people that maybe like race cross country and like SoCal or another Nike league that haven't tried a different style of racing. Yeah. You might find out like, do you have anyone on your team that was in that position at Colorado Mesa where they never did another discipline and all of a sudden they were like, wow, I'm really good at dual slalom. I mean, I, uh, oh, who was it? Or, well, I mean, Katie Klaus has, has raced a lot of different disciplines like cycle cross and, and mountain biking and, yeah. and um, road, but she did a, our home downhill race this year and she w w crushed it, was like insane. Really? I feel like she, she doesn't realize how good her mountain bike skills are because it's not her main yeah. sport. But I feel like she made like a discovery that she's really good at downhill. Well, so but, um, Klaus, for those of you who don't know, she's she's won like a ton of national titles. She races on the road in Europe. Like she's only like 19 or 20. She's 19? I think yeah, she's 19. Yeah. yeah, so she's never really done a lot of mountain biking and then mm -hmm. found out. Uh, Kelsey wants to know, do they have enduro? I don't think they do at this time, they, right? Not every, they don't have it at nationals, but at a few of our conference races, it, I think only one of them, they, they did have an enduro race, which was cool. Yeah. I think it's so, something that might happen in the next few years, though, because it's it's growing in popularity, so we might we see might it see at, happen. At then, for those other events did you like have bikes for all of them do you borrow bikes how does that work I had I had bikes for all of them um my downhill bike is more like a trail bike that yeah. definitely some of the course the downhill courses I rode it was it maybe wasn't like quite enough suspension <laughs> but it got the job done <laughs> But I think for sometimes people will like borrow bikes um, or like I had to borrow, I just like borrowed someone's full face helmet. I don't yeah. know. I don't know a full face helmet, but yeah. Um, yeah. So we have two more questions. What's the biggest lesson or tip you have learned from racing and training? Like the, I'm trying to think. You can name a couple of takeaways. I think for me, it's uh, always, always keep in check why you're doing it in the first place if you're training and racing and you're not having fun it's not enjoyable like and it's it's just important to keep that in perspective in perspective you're doing it because you love it, the sport and just kind of always like keep that in the back of your head or like if you really don't feel like going out for a ride or or going out on training that day just just it doesn't have to always be so serious I guess is what I yeah guess. And I think also, do you feel like there are some days where you, you just don't feel like going out? No one's motivated all the time, but mm -hmm. like knowing your why and knowing that you're yeah. on most of the time can help get you through some of those days when you're not as motivated. Do you think that's true? Exactly. It, I, if you, if you have, if you know, you have a reason why you love training and, and why you love racing and riding then on the, it makes it easier to motivate yourself to get out on the days that you don't 
you just don't feel like it yet. Cause there's definitely, I feel like there's so many days where I'm just like, Oh, I just don't feel like training today. And it's always, once I get out the door, I'm good. But sometimes it's just hard to get out the door. <laughs> so but. last year, Gwen and I did this, uh, like, I think it was like 75 miles, like a little over four hours. And Gwen had done a heavy weightlifting session that morning. Oh, I was remember so, that? Yeah. I was dying. <laughs> yeah, the last yeah. like hour we were going and I was just riding with her going, you got this Gwen, come on Gwen. <laughs> you got, and I didn't lift that morning. So I was definitely fresher than you were. But I just remember like being amazed at like, like you work so hard. It's really, it's really cool to see that you work so hard, but like you still love to ride your bike. Like I think uh -huh. that's what, and I feel what makes it another thing that makes it easier too is right. So surrounding yourself with people that are positive like that. Cause I was, I was feeling terrible, <laughs> but I got through the ride, like, cause you were there and you were positive and you're, you weren't like, Oh, you're not feeling good. You were like, come on, you got this. We, Come on. Or were we in Julian? I can't remember. That was two years ago. Last year we did the loop where we started in Temecula at the coffee shop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then rode by McKenna's house actually. Oh, and, and I was cracking to... so hard towards the end. Yeah. Yeah. We went to Fallbrook and went up Duluth, which is a really long climb for anyone yeah. who doesn't know it. And we did a lot of climbing. Yeah. And so after doing a bunch of like deadlifts and whatever else you did, like I can- The ride on it's just on its own is a really tough ride but but it was honestly it was easier if I was by myself I would have been suffering a lot more yeah it's nice it was, it was nicer to have it's nice to have people to ride with that are positive and like and when you're not feeling great they lift you up yeah so that actually goes well into a new question from Sophia that says so when you don't do well in a race how do you come back mentally and keep a positive mindset so for me for me, because I, I feel like it's it's a thing every athlete deals with and like mental strength is 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 a really hard thing and, and it's not always some days you can feel really confident and other days it might waver a bit. For me, I I I started doing this um when I started racing World Cups, but I have like a race journal where I write I write kind of my goals before the race and after the race and it, a lot of times it helps or like helps me visualize and and if I'm if I am coming back after if I'm having like a couple bad races in a row or just like in a funk I like to go back and read entries from when I was in a really good mental space mm -hmm. and and uh and just kind of see what my thought process was and remember like okay yeah I'm not I'm still that same racer I'm still the same person that means I can do it again um, and that helps me a lot. Or, I mean, a lot of times, even now, I, uh, <laughs> a lot of times, even now, if I'm super nervous before a race or I've been in a funk, I still call, I'll call Mr. Grace and ask for like a little pep talk. <laughs> oh, you're going to make me cry. That's awesome. <laughs> well, that's so cool that yeah. you still keep in touch with them that much. That's mm -hmm. amazing. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, the journal idea, I really, so I keep a journal, but I really like the idea of going back to find the races when you're feeling good and reading those. I think yeah. that's, that's a really, really good tip. That's, mm -hmm. that's super yeah. good. Um, yeah, someone said they're going to start their own journal. Okay, so yeah. how do you control your nerves before a race? Oh, <laughs> I feel like that's so impossible. <laughs> Sometimes I'll be, I'll stand on the heart rate, I'll look, I'll stand on the start line. I'll look down at my heart rate. We're just like standing there. My heart rate's like 150. I'm like freaking <laughs> out. But I feel like, I feel like uh, almost a little bit of nerves is good. It helps you. You should be like excited and, and like a little nervous on the start line almost. But I definitely get, you can also like over, you could be over nervous. I think it's good. Just like even even while you're standing on the start you could visualize okay the the gun going off or whatever them calling start um clip your foot going into the pedal your start going well like just visualize it and the more i feel like it's easier when you think about if you think about it going perfect it's a lot more likely that it's going to you're not going to miss your pedal or things like that i think visualizing helps a lot I agree. Do you listen to music when you warm up at all? Oh yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and sometimes oh, I do, sometimes I, I'll listen to like the same song for my whole warm up. It's like whatever song is like my favorite song at the time. So I, now I like when I hear certain songs, I associate it with like different races, <laughs> but I don't know. But I think it helps get like in the zone. Some people do no music. I, I think it, and I, I used to do this too. I like it if a song was stuck in my head during a race. So I'd be like singing it in my head during the race. I don't know. Di- different things work for different people. But You know, it's funny because that used to happen to me for running races all the time. Mm-hmm. But for some reason for mountain biking, I don't get songs stuck in my head. Yeah. Isn't that weird? I feel like there's oh, maybe a little bit more to focus on. So, yeah. so it might be different. Yeah. Like, there's a lot that goes into a mountain bike race. Honestly. We have a ton of questions. I'm going to go with I mean, another start line one. So on the start line, are you spazzy or focused? I feel like I'm kind of spazzy. <laughs> I just like will start talking to everyone. I can tell some people are like, oh my gosh, can you just be quiet? We're kind of smart. <laughs> but uh, yeah, because I can be kind of antsy. I do. And I'll just start talking a ton. But yeah, I feel like it, that's just personal to everyone, how they prefer to be on it. Some people prefer to be super quiet and, and focused. And I like right before I get into that headspace, but up until then, I, I just can't even sit still. <laughs> awesome. uh, okay, so Danielle says, do you ever feel like you struggle with overtraining? And if so, how do you deal with it? That's, I mean, for sure I have. Yeah. And, and I think Cause I, I mean, I used to, my coach that I have now would give me training and I'd ride like an hour longer than I was supposed to every day. And (laughs) eventually you start to realize once you actually start doing the rest that they put in and, and, and you realize you're getting better results or you feel stronger, it kind of clicks. It's like, okay, you want to do more, but sometimes less is more. And it, it it took me a long time to learn that. And, um, but my racing improved a lot once I did. So it's just something to keep in mind. But um, do you get like signs of overtraining? Like some people like can't sleep as well or like, do you have yeah. signs where you're like, okay, Gwen, I need to chill out and talk to my coach? Yeah, well, and, uh, what a, a good thing for me is that I, I train with power and heart rate and I can kind of see if for me is once it consistently my uh, my, my power is super low. My heart rate is super high or, or I can't get my heart rate up. I, I can tell those are all signs where I'm like, okay, it's time for me to take a break. I it's, I know it's easier said than done, but like, really, it's just listening to your body. You can some, I, sometimes it's easy to, to just be like, oh, I'm not that tired, but yeah. you can tell when your body's fatigued, even if you want to ignore it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Okay. Does it feel different lining up for collegiate races versus high school races? I feel like what's good about collegiate racing is right. Cause after you race high school and like in juniors uh, in the USA cycling races, the jump to like UCI pro women is pretty huge and a collegiate race kind of feels like it's U23. So it, so it, it's like a, it's like a little, it's like a nice middle step. Um, but I feel like it, it was, it's a little different in that, um, it's not as organized. It's a little, it's collegiate races feel like they're for fun. Like mostly like, it, and, uh, and like you, if you went to a, like a collegiate conference race, it's a lot less set up than a NICA race is, if that makes sense. Like the start lines are kind of like, uh, there's not like a big like start finish you don't pre-ride the day before you usually get there like the night before the race and you don't know the course very well it it and it they always feel like collegiate conference races feel so relaxed in my opinion aren't they run I think they're run by students right yeah they're all run by students too they're not run by adults like Matt exactly <laughs> exactly I mean for 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 what um there's still really great races that are put on for, for like, um, I guess really like the budget and pre- yeah. preparation time they have. Um, yeah. 
And so you got to read Big Bear for nationals, right? What was that? You got to read some Big Bear for collegiate nationals? Yeah. And then so collegiate nationals, because it's with USA Cycling, is does, that's like normally like the collegiate races are fun and everyone's just like we're competitive, but it, it definitely is a more relaxed vibe. And then it's, you get to nationals and all of a sudden everyone's super serious. <laughs> it's definitely. You can feel the environment is different. That's, that's where it kind of changes gears, but yeah, it was nice this last year. Um, yeah. The collegiate race was in big bear, which is honestly a lot of where I like developed most of my technical skills was in big bear. So it was, it was cool to have a race that was so close to home and all my family was there and, and a lot of friends, it, it made it, it just makes it, it's really, it's really special to get to race with your whole family and friends there. It, yeah. And so I guess also, are there any, do you have any team members from SoCal on your Colorado Mesa team? There weren't, not on my high school team, but a lot of people that I've raced with just in the SoCal league, actually quite a few okay. go to CMU. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah. And then you probably see others at like collegiate nationals too, right? Exactly. Yeah. Like that's like the one time a year Madeline and I race with each other still. <laughs> oh yeah. That's yeah. Cause yeah. she's back at Milligan. There's a yeah. ton of SoCal kids that go there. And then yeah. McCray is the other one where mm-hmm. there's like quite a few. So it's cool that there's these like SoCal like families. Little starting. SoCal families in different yeah. places. And then it, it's honestly, it always feels like a little bit of a throwback when we're all back at for collegiate nationals. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's been like a, a year since we last raced with each other. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so then someone asked, do you know what the top cycling colleges are? I think Gwen will probably say CMU is the only one. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> CMU is okay. the national champion, the national champions. So we are the best team, but, it's, but probably like Colorado Mesa University, Fort Lewis College is another big one, and Milligan, Durango? and Lee's, what was that? Fort Lewis is in Durango, Colorado? Yeah, okay. yeah, they're, they're probably, um, they're definitely like top, top three uh, biggest collegiate cycling schools too, um, but yeah, the main ones I can think of are, yeah, Lee's McRae, Milligan, CMU and Fort, Fort Collins or Fort Lewis. <laughs> and you have a pretty big like rivalry with one of the female athletes from Fort Lewis, right? Haven't you guys had some epic battles? Yeah, and what's cool too is we <laughs> sorry. <laughs> we race um uh World Cups together too. And so we travel with the USAC USAC team together too. Um so we race together all the time. And it, it's honestly, it's a pretty, it's similar to me and Madeline where I, I feel like our, we're so similar in speeds. It's same thing. It kind of just depends on who's feeling better that day. It, it makes it, it's exciting to have someone that you race really closely with. It can, it can be, uh, it can be positive. Or, drag too much for you, but when you won your national championship, it was over, it was over her though, wasn't it? Yeah, so, um, yeah, because she was at Collegiate Nationals, too, so, so my junior year, it was, like, a a super close battle, we, like, sprinted in together, and then, um, my, my, I guess, no, no, that would have been my sophomore year, I keep getting confused, because we didn't do Collegiate Nationals this year, I didn't really do my senior season, which is sad, but it's okay, but, um, and then last year at Big Bear, um, me and Katie actually broke away. Uh, yeah. We're both on the same collegiate team. And, and then Sevilla was, was third after that. So it was pretty, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's like collegiate nationals, but all three of us had been national, like USA Cycling National Champions before. Yeah. So very competitive field. It was awesome. And you all three raced in NICA. Katie, did she ever race in NICA at all? Because they have a league back there. And I, I want to say she did a little bit, maybe. Yeah. But um, I think because she was doing so many other disciplines too, like road yeah. and cyclocross early on, I think she wasn't as involved with NICA as I know Sevilla was involved with NICA a lot in yeah. the local league. But um, I don't think Katie was quite as much. 
Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Um, oh, someone wants to know if running is still part of your training. Yeah. So I, especially when I started racing cyclocross, I started running more, but more like when I go into off season or like transition season after I, I, I'll start running a few times a week just to switch it up. I ride now that I'm more specialized, right? ride bikes train on my bike all year round so it's kind of nice to have this like period of time where I incorporate running still uh just to switch it up because even in your off season there's plenty of other ways to get fitness and not do the same thing all the time so I definitely still run yeah, yeah. um let's see I had a question oh okay so then you had said in high school you ran and did about like 10 to 12 hours a week so now that you're more focused on cycling like what's a big volume week for you now uh now I'd say it's anywhere from like 15 to 20 hours mm -hmm. and I think the biggest week I've ever done was like 32 hours or something like that but that's kind of like I took like four days off off the bike after that I was kind of a lot but that was during quarantine I had nothing else to do <laughs> what, 32 hours yeah, I was just riding a lot every day. I had absolutely nothing else to do. <laughs> but I would say like a normal a normal training week uh, ranges from 15 to 20 hours. Okay. And yeah. that's with like some intensity in there as well? Yeah, depending on, like right now I'm not doing much intensity, maybe a little bit of tempo work. Um, mm -hmm. But, and then once I'm in season or closer to season, it, I don't usually do weeks longer than 15 hours. Okay. That yeah. makes sense. Cause you can't have race, recover, race, recover. Exactly. Yeah. And when you're racing, you end up doing so much. It's hard to get in a lot of volume and also be rested for a race. But. And so you actually have also been able to go over and race world cups, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. speaking of being scared to be far away from home, is that okay. like, do you get nervous traveling alone? Do your parents go with you? How so I usually, yeah, I travel a, a few times that I've, I've been lucky for, for worlds almost or two times my family got to come to worlds when it was in Australia. And this past year when it was in Canada, uh, my, my mom, <laughs> my mom and my, my stepdad and, uh, my little brother got to come, which was really great. But most of the time for the World Cups, I don't have my family there, which is it, honestly, it was a big adjustment because I was I was used to all the US Cups and all the Nike races. I was used to having my whole family there and people like if I was nervous, it was easier to quickly have someone I could talk to and and uh, help me feel comfortable. And it, it wasn't it's honestly was an adjustment. It for sure it was it's but a lot of times once I once I'm over there, I don't re realize how far away I am, really. <laughs> yeah. And so is it like, do you get to explore when you travel over there at all? Or is it really focused on racing? A lot of the time, a lot of the time we're either on the race course, like on the, at the race course venue or in our accommodations. I feel like you don't get to explore that much. But if there's if we're there for long enough, then we get to do some cool like adventure rides, like map out different rides, um, like check out like little coffee shops and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But um, a lot of the time it's, it's like you're there for the race and you don't get to do a ton of like yeah. exploring, but it's still a really cool experience. And just being at the race course venues i mean they're i mean it's so beautiful everywhere i've been is I what's feel your favorite country fortunate. that you've raced in oh why well, I, I really oh, what i'm trying to think i really liked switzerland but my favorite race course is in andorra okay yeah, yeah. as i feel like andorra is like a little bit higher elevation it's the highest elevation so i I feel like it's a bit of an advantage of course too, for me, right? It's, it's definitely, yeah, there's like, it's all like it, the climbs are shorter and steeper, which suits me really well. And then the descending wars, like some world cups, there's a lot of man-made features and Dora is it's technical, but it's like, it's natural rocks. 
natural terrain. And I feel like I just, it's a fun course just to ride, honestly. So I think it's my favorite. So that leads well into the next couple of questions. Um, do you prefer a hardtail or a full suspension if you had to choose one to race on for the rest of your life? Yeah, I would pick a full suspension for sure. I used to like refuse to ride anything but my hardtail, yeah. but eventually, uh, especially how the courses are now, a full suspension is it and they're so you they the equipment is so good now and you can have the lockout a full suspension just makes more sense and it's more comfortable it's it's more economical it, it's definitely I think it's a better choice if I I hardly ever race my hardtail anymore unless it's a short track yeah and so um you you ride on Norco bikes right yeah how many bikes do you have <laughs> I have <laughs> So I have my full suspension XC bike, my hardtail XC bike, my cr cycle cross bike, my trail bike, my road bike. So only five? Yeah, just five. <laughs> you need a downhill <laughs> bike still? Oh, wait, did I say trail bike? Well, you said trail bike, but you said yeah. you actually need a downhill bike, right? Oh, I, I borrowed, uh, my dad has a Norco uh, downhill bike that I borrowed, so it's not technically mine. <laughs> okay um and then do you do a recovery ride after a race and if so what does that look like uh I used to be really bad about doing it but usually I'll go for like a 10 or 15 minute spin after a race sometimes it's hard like and there's so much going on at a finish and, and it but it is good for you to do I I I tried to focus on doing it more and usually I'll do like a recovery like I'll I'll take like a recovery protein uh mix right after a race too um and just like spin it's 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 good to cool down a bit rather than after such a hard effort just stopping completely it's uh build up a bunch of lactic acid it's not it's better to keep things kind of moving and slow it down eat, yeah. like, ease it down and so this is kind of back to like a pre-race ritual, but at one point you said that you used to have chocolate chip mint ice cream the Thursday before every race. Oh yeah. That's if I can, I still do it, but sometimes, sometimes it's not always like, uh, available to me, <laughs> but, but I, it's definitely still something I do. And I eat mint chip ice cream like a lot, probably more than I should, but it doesn't really matter. Is that your favorite flavor? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Okay, so everyone take note. Take note, mint chip, ice cream, Nutella. Is it more stressful balancing bikes in school and college or is it about the same as high school? On it, for me, I felt like in high school, it was more difficult because you're in school from you know 7.30 to 2.30. The window for training is a lot smaller, but in college, I have more freedom to pick online classes or pick classes in the morning so I can ride in the evening or or evening classes so I can ride in the morning I actually think I have more time to train in college than I did when I was in high school you've done a lot of your classes online too right yeah I take I take usually I'll take more than half my classes online which is helpful because then when the sun is out I can do my training and then at night I I or in the evening and at night I focus on study school. hard Mm -hmm. yeah and then like what's good too is a lot of online classes uh right you have like it's not like every day you have uh something to work on it's like everything a lot of times everything is due on Sunday so you have the whole week so if I have a rest day that rest day is like dedicated to schoolwork and I I'll spend like a few multi a few specific days trying to get all my schoolwork done and then other days are more focused on training so something that you said to me on a ride, I think it was the Julian ride, is that you like to set really high goals for your academics. Like you're you're just as focused on your academics as you are on the bike. And so that's not really a question, but I always thought it was something yeah. that was cool because you understand that both are important, especially if you're going to college. It's a fairly large commitment. So exactly. You yeah. Taking it seriously. And the the way I've always thought about it is, um, before I was a cyclist, uh, I wanted to go to college, and I, I was always really invested with my with my schoolwork and and my grades. So it's something that's important to me. Mm -hmm. Um. So I and I, 
and I like doing good in my classes. It, it, it makes me feel happy and satisfied when I do well. And so it's, it's a lot of work, but, but it's at the end, it's def I mean, it's worth it. It sounds, I don't know, maybe a little cheesy, but I mean, it is, it's satisfying when you get it all done. Um, cool. So just a couple more questions and then we'll let you go. Um, one that was submitted that I haven't asked yet on the Instagram is how, how do you deal with your mental health? So recently you had made that like really vulnerable post, which was really cool. Just saying that, Hey, this year has been hard even for me. So how, how has this year been for you and how have you found maybe ways to like see shining light or have happiness? Yeah. I mean, a lot of it is surrounding yourself with good people and a positive environment. And I, I feel like it's something a lot of people struggle with, but um, just so much of it is making sure you have a good support system. And if there's certain things that aren't working for you, or you can tell it's not in your best interest, you have to be able to know when you need to make certain changes. I feel like I'll, uh, it's important just I when what I've done uh, over and over again, because a big thing, right, of something that brings me the most happiness is racing. And I dedicate so much of my life to has not been an outlet that I have. And it's not something I've been able to do this year, which I feel like was one aspect that was hard for me. But I mean, I, I just try to think of like, okay, long-term racing will be back eventually. Think of where you want to be in a couple of years from now. And that's why it's important to keep, you know, doing the work now, even though it seems like, what are you doing this for? What's the point? But I, I feel like it's, it's, you, you just have to change your, you have to, you have to change your perspective. Like look at the big picture basically. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a wonderful answer. And I think having a good support network is, is super important. And it's something that like can be hard right now for mm -hmm. a lot of student athletes. But I think also just like being able to reach out to someone, even if it is just through an email, like saying, hey, I need to talk. Like just mm -hmm. knowing that you have people that you can do that is really, really super important, which is kind of why we wanted to do these grit webinars too. Like it's not, in, it's not in person, like we're not writing together, but it still is like some sort of connection. And we've been trying to make sure it's like positive topics too. But then exactly. also just so everyone on here knows that like they do have a support network and like we're all here for each other, so. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah. I think that's super important. Yeah, so then the last question since it's 559, what are your long-term goals for cycling and what are your plans after you graduate college which is really soon so if we're like long term long term like four to eight years from now i want to make the olympic team that's probably my biggest goal in cycling um i'd love to be on a world cup podium uh that's actually my biggest goal for this next season. It's my last year, U23. I, it's my, yeah, it's my biggest goal is to be on a U23 World Cup podium. Um, and then after I graduate, um, I'm, I'll probably, I'm like, I'm going to focus on racing for a while and, and put all my energy into it. And I'll probably, um, help out a bit with the collegiate team in Grand Junction. I'm going to start actually helping out with um, the high school team that's in Grand Junction that races in the Nike League um, cool. probably next year. Um, and and I'll probably continue to work in the performance lab on campus and um, just gain more experience in, in that setting since that's where I'd like to be eventually. Mm -hmm. um, you know, race as long as I can, and I'll eventually get my master's because to because I'd love to be like an exercise physiologist, and eventually I'll need my master's for that. So, and then eventually I'll go back to school. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Um, yeah. Does anyone have any last questions? And if not, Gwen, do you have any like last words of wisdom that you'd like to give everyone? Oh, well, I guess the the main thing is just like I said before, like, make sure you remember why you're doing it. And it's for fun. You get to, you, you can meet some of your like 
closest friends. I feel like it's cycling is a great outlet in the environment, especially in the SoCal League and NICA in general is super positive. I think it's a really great thing. Um, but keep it fun, basically. Yeah. I agree with that. That's so cool. Um, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for giving some of your evening to us. Uh, that yeah. was really, really fun. And then maybe we can do it again sometime after yeah. you get on the podium. And if, any of, and if any of you had questions that we didn't get to or you, you'd like to ask, feel free to message me on on Instagram if that I can leave my handle maybe in the notes but feel free to reach out and I, I'll for sure get back to you guys yeah oh that's awesome that's yeah. super cool but it was great talking with everyone yeah. this was cool I'm happy I got to do this